Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about what does the network administrator or the network engineer do in a business? We'll check out that right after this. Hey, my name is Emilio. I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're talking about the network engineer or the network administrator. That, that term can be interchangeable depending on the scenario. But let's go over what the responsibilities are, what the network person in a business is responsible for. As the name suggests, the network engineer is responsible for all things network related in a business. Um, you've, other, you've also got other people perhaps that work closely with the network engineer in a company, such as systems administrators, such as desktop engineers, help desk people, people who look after the storage, people who look after security, those sort of things. And they're all gonna work very closely with the network engineer. The network engineer looks after all of the network components in a business, in the IT infrastructure. So in a lot of data centers, in server rooms, in comms cabinets, in a business, there is network equipment. There are things such as switches and routers. There are firewalls in place. They're the three big things that the network person looks after. They're gonna look after switches, you know, a big, a big uh, essentially switch with a number of ethernet ports on it where a network engineer can plug in network cables, you know, CAT 5E, CAT 6 net ethernet cables, making sure that those ports are configured correctly. Um, you can set up things like such as VLANs or particular subnets on these ports. You can set up management. You can control the speed of those ports. You can control what sort of traffic is allowed onto those ports and what traffic is allowed out of those ports. So really the overall management of switches. Um, these switches connect various devices. They're gonna connect desktops and phones, for example, and laptops out on the, uh, on the floor. You've got a business, you've got a number of staff. Each staff member requires some sort of a computer. Uh, could be a laptop, could be a desktop. Uh, they may also have a phone that is plugged in via ethernet, such as a VoIP phone. And all of these cables need to go somewhere. So these cables, in generally in most organizations, will go into what's called patch panels. Um, so the network guy is responsible for making sure that all of these cables are labeled correctly, that they're the right speed, that they're configured correctly on these computers, and that they go into patch panels. Um, depending on the setup, some places may have multiple levels. For example, if you're in a, in a building and your office has you know, three levels in a building, patch panels could be set up in each individual build, in each individual level, or they could all be just you know, all running through the roof or running down through the floor into a centralized location. But these patch panels then in turn will then run into these switches. So the switches will contain your desktops, your laptops, your phones, etc. Other switches will also contain other network infrastructure, such as your servers. Um, you know, all of the servers which contain file servers, your DNS servers, there's a whole bunch of servers. There could be hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of servers in an organization. These servers, to some extent, need to be connected to a physical switch of some sort. Um, servers have got technology such as physical or virtual, um, but really, at the end of the day, regardless of the, if they're virtual servers, they're gonna be running on some physical form of hardware, which requires some sort of network connectivity into a network switch. These switches then can be connected to one another. They've got the appropriate setup and security in place to allow for um, you know, the configuration of these, of these switches correctly on a network. These switches can come in a number of different sorts of vendors. Uh, you know, the big, essentially the big managed sorts of switches are gonna be your Cisco's, uh, your HPEs, your Junipers, these sort of guys, they're gonna have switches that are smart switches. They're called managed switches. Uh, there's also a lot of other switches that a lot of businesses can use as well, which we'll call them, this, the, a lot of the nickname is a dumb switch or an unmanaged switch, a switch that doesn't have any, really any smarts behind it in terms of management. Um, these switches may also fall under the domain of the, uh, the network guy. They may not fall under the domain of that network person. Uh, it could just be just these managed switches. On top of that, you've then got your routers. So these switches will have routers plugged into them, right? Uh, they're gonna have your servers, they're gonna have other devices such as storage devices, your, your SAN, your NAS, these devices also, but then also routers running into them. Your routers are essentially route traffic. The, the real definition of what a router is, is uh, well, it's a device that is used to connect networks together. 
you may have a network A and a network B. They're in completely different subnets, different IP ranges, perhaps in different VLANs. And then you've got a router that essentially communicates together for the, like these networks can communicate to each other via routers. So all of these routers fall under the domain of the network engineer. The router uh, may be configured with multiple routes, routing traffic from different locations, right? Um, so these routers can configure uh, to route traffic internally in a business. You know, if you need certain security in place, you've got something like a DMZ zone, a DMZ zone for servers, for example, that are external facing. And then you've got some internal thing, internal network inside your network. You want to have some routes in between to you know traverse the, the network from subnet A to subnet B internally. You may also have connections out to alternate sites. If you've got multiple sites in a business, routing the traffic from site A to site B uh, through these routers would be the responsibility of the network engineer. Uh, routers that communicate out to a ISP, an internet service provider or a telecommunications provider. These routers are also possibly gonna be under the management of the network engineer, perhaps in collusion with the service provider um, that provided this router. Uh, the, the the routers, as I said, would be responsible would be a responsibility under the network engineer, but some that are telecommunications routers fall under the domain of some telecommunications guys, um, and you would be responsible as a network engineer to work closely with these um, telecommunication providers. So you're going to be doing some go you know back and forth. You'd be responsible for talking to these telecommunications guys, the service providers, um, when there are issues with these particular routers that are on your premise. Now these routers, these switches could be on premise, they could be in your data center, in your office for example, or in comms cabinets, or they could be in data centers external. They could be, in, you may have a specific data center that is responsible for you know, a component of your network, or the network may not actually even be internal in terms of your infrastructure network, it could be in a data center. So the responsibility for the management of these devices in every single location falls under the network engineer. We've got the firewall. So the firewalls uh, essentially control the traffic flowing in and out of your network or even between your, between your network, between your subnets. You may need certain traffic to flow via a firewall for security perspective. You don't want the internet, or everything out on the internet to be able to just come into your network. So it will flow through what's called a firewall. A firewall you can control what sorts of port traffic you want to flow through it what sort of, you know, is it gonna allow internet traffic? Will it allow FTP traffic? Will it allow DNS traffic? What sort of traffic flows through this firewall? Uh, it can control what IPs are allowed to come in and out. Uh, so the management of these firewalls is imperative for this network engineer. Um, as part of this, the network engineer may also have a, a second hat of a security engineer. Uh, in some organizations, there may be a separate individual or a separate team uh, of security engineers or security admins that work closely with the network guys, but generally in a smaller place, the, se the security guy may also be the network person. So making sure that all the security is set up correctly on your network. The network person should also have a really good analytical design sort of a, a brain. Um, I like somebody from a networking perspective to be very good at design and be able to think about the network as a whole. Um, you know, they shouldn't just have experience in switches or basic switches or basic routing. They should understand all the different routing protocols, what are the benefits of each, what are the different types of switching that I can set up, understand VLANing and subnetting, and be able to design me a good network architecture for a business. So a networking guy doesn't necessarily have to be an architect, like a solutions architect or an enterprise architect, but at least you'd be able to understand a overall network design of a business be able to go up and draw me a nice network design of a business, right? How everything's gonna to fit together. How are my desktops gonna to, you know, go into communicate via my switches, via my routers? How are all my servers and my storage and my firewalls gonna communicate in? How are my links between sites going? You know, if I've got a site A and a site B, an office in one state, another office in a different state, how do they communicate with each other? Really from an overall design perspective. So they should understand not only the LAN, which is the local area network within your business, but also the WAN, the bigger wide area network, how it all, how all of your offices communicate to each other. If you've got third party vendors or third party providers or third party companies or customers that you work with, 
how they all fit into the WAN perspective. Understanding what links are going where, what the speed of the links are. Do the links have redundancy? Are the links going via an MPLS? What sort of speeds are these links? So really understanding the whole lot is very, very important for a network engineer. So they're also gonna be responsible for the simple racking and stacking and cabling of these devices. So yes, going in and you know logging into the Cisco iOS platform and doing all the command, you know, the command line stuff, configuring the routes, setting up the VLANs, you know, all those sort of things, but also be able to physically be the person who goes in and racks a new switch, cables it up, cables it nice and neat to a different switch or a different router in a data center or in a comms cabinet um, rack. So that is really a summary of what a network engineer or network administrator does. For my perspective, I generally recommend network guys to have some sort of certification. You can get a lot of Juniper certification, you can get Cisco certification. Uh, it really depends on the business, but Cisco is the leader prov leading provider. Having these certifications just adds to your profile, adds to your CV, adds weight to your profile. So generally for me, if I'm ever interviewing for a network engineer, if they've got a CCNA, I'll go, oh good, that's great. If they've got a CCMP, even better. If they've got a CCIE, even better. Rather than somebody coming in for a networking job and not having a certification to prove that they actually know what they're doing. Um, going for these, like for a CCNA, for example, the very basic um, Cisco certific certification, yes, it touches on a lot of the Cisco product, but it also gives you a real good fundamental overview of networking. So getting these certificates adds to your uh, overall understanding of, of physical uh, work with these devices and with you know physical racking and stacking and cabling and configuring of routers, switches, etc., etc. So that is my summary of what a network engineer does. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you commented below. If you think I was wrong on anything, let me know. If you think I missed anything, let me know. I'd love to have a dialogue. Also, you commenting does help me grow my channel and make a lot more videos just like this. So hope you found it helpful. Like my video and subscribe and we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.